Hey folks. Hey, welcome back to the Stye Shack. Hey. Time for another Stye story. <laughs> okay, if you'll recall, I did a Stye story called Ruthie's Hard Hat Cafe. Now, in that video, I had mentioned Ruthie's sourdough pancakes. Now, her sourdough pancakes, um, okay, I had to look at a couple of notes because I talked to a couple other people and confirmed <laughs> that I was remembering correctly. Now, old Ruthie, when I met her, she was in her mid-70s. And she was one of those she's she was one of those people that oh my gosh. She she had the body of a person that was maybe in their late thirties and she was in her mid seventies. She was healthy, vibrant, tough. Um she was in her mid seventies, um, she she appeared generally quite young, and her energy was always overflowing. I mean, she just oh boy, she was busy, 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 and she was a tiny thing, generally petite. I mean, she was only about five foot two, maybe, and. Um, you know, she weighed about as much as a wet feather, you know. But in her restaurant, I had mentioned that her restaurant was a big horseshoe-shaped counter. No tables. Big horseshoe-shaped counter that sat the height of a bar, like, like you went into a pub, a bar height. So it had all these bar stools. Now you would think, how can a five foot two gal serve anybody over that big tall bar? Well, in the center of that horseshoe bar, there was a built up floor. The floor was built up. So the counter was at waist height for Ruthie. And that's the way she was able to serve everybody. And her kitchen was elevated at the end of that counter. Now in her kitchen, you knew something was, you, you, you wondered, what is that? Because here's this huge, and I'm moving my head because it doesn't fit in the screen. Here's this huge, just huge crock. Dark brown and light brown colored crock, big crock with a big pottery crock lid on it. And that was her sourdough. That was the biggest batch of sourdough I ever seen. But she made so many sourdough pancakes a day, it made sense that she had this big old crock with that huge sourdough starter in it because she had to make so many batches of pancake batter per day she needed that much she would never let us watch her feed her sourdough starter she said it was family secret <laughs> Well, I'm not going to go into all the details of how you get a sourdough started and then how you take from it and then feed it and then take from it and then feed it. And that's how you keep it going. That's not what this is about. There's a thousand videos on making sourdough on YouTube. If you've, if you've never been on YouTube, you should check it out. It's got a lot of information on it. And you can find out how to make sourdough starter on YouTube. You should check it out sometime. 
<laughs> anyway, you see that smart Alec. I'm gonna just I'm gonna shut his video off. <laughs> don't go anywhere. Don't go. Anywhere. Okay. Anyway, sourdough starters, if they're treated right and they're treated well can go on and on and on and on. And all they are is a replacement for yeast, okay? Well, Ruthie's sourdough starter originated in the mid-1800s. They estimated it to be about 1852. Her, her now she was 75, 576 at the time her great grandmother started it it's my understanding somewhere in eastern Pennsylvania in 1852 and because of the Civil War and her family's re religious convictions they wanted no part of the Civil War. So they headed west. And eventually, by the 1850s, they were into Montana, the family. And then they, I, from what I understand, it was in the 1880s that her family finally settled in the region in which we were in, in northwestern Montana. So that sourdough went back to 1852. Can you imagine that? So it, when you were having Ruthie's sourdough pancakes, that culture that had been created in that sourdough has existed and continually been fed the exact same way it was starting in 1852 all the way through and this was in 1984 my gosh she said that um, she actually had um, people that asked for samples of it from, I can't remember what, which university it was, it was some university, because they wanted to do um, basically an analysis of it. And um, it had such a unique her sourdough had such a unique flavor to it. People just went nuts over it. Just They wanted her sourdough pancakes so bad. People wanted some of her sourdough starter so that she they could copy it and, and have their own. She wouldn't give it to them. She refused. She said, if I gave it to you, You'd ruin the culture because I'm not going to tell I'm not going to tell you how I feed my sourdough, how I keep the culture the way it is, and the way it's been done ever since 1852. I'm not sharing that with you. She said that's a secret in my life and my family's life that will stay with us, and if my daughter doesn't take it on, it will die with us. Seems kind of selfish. Oh, well, it's hers. I can't, you know, you can't fault her. It's hers. But that was the best darn sourdough pancakes I have ever eaten in my entire life. I could never get my fill of them. I'd eat her sourdough pancakes until I was forcing it, was forcing myself to swallow. They were so good. So good. Now that's sourdough. That is sourdough. Um, the I guess there's really not much more I can say about that, except that when it came to her kitchen in that restaurant, 
if there was ever an issue with the heat in the place, holy smoke, she'd be down to my house. Stai, I need you up there. I need you to help me. I got to get that heat, make sure that heat keeps going because that sourdough cannot, cannot handle extreme temperature change. She treated that sourdough literally as a living thing, and it had to be protected. And she was absolutely right, because it is. That sourdoughs can be touchy, um, and they don't like extreme temperature differences. So, But that's it. Now that's sourdough for you. <laughs> that's old Ruthie's sourdough from the 1850s, for crying out loud. Civil War sourdough. I don't know whatever happened to it. Um, as I had said in the other video, Ruthie has long passed away, God bless her. Um, and from what I understand, she only had the one daughter and no other family. Um, and her daughter had no interest in the restaurant or anything really of Ruthie's belongings, that kind of thing. So I suspect that the sourdough is long gone long, long gone. Um, it's a shame, because it'd still be alive and going today if Ruthie had her way. So there you go. There's a nice story for you. Don't forget, folks, click my ugly mug. Give it a good poke. So that's that'll subscribe you. Over here, yeah, I get so screwed up with my fingers. Over here, <laughs> check out a couple videos. Thumbs up. Ring the bell. You'll always know what I'm on. Hey, this is Stein North saying, you all have a very nice day. Bye-bye.